Hello friends, this video on neat electromagnetic induction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us move ahead and talk about another important property which is self-induction. So what is it? How do we find out self-inductance? The self-induction is the property of a coil uh, to oppose current flowing through it by inducing EMF in itself. So basically a coil tries to oppose current which is flowing in itself. So how does it oppose it? By inducing an EMF within itself. So that's how it uh, handles it. And this property is measured by self-inductance of the coil. So self-inductance is normally denoted by capital L and it is equal to phi by I. So it is also known as inertia of electricity because we normally use the term electric uh, inertia uh, in case of motion right but here this is that is why this is called inertia of electricity so how do we get this um, expression so basically e is equal to minus l di by dt that's because we knew that e is equal to minus d phi by dt so phi can be written as n into i so l is a constant so di by dt because l is the value of the self inductance of a coil so that value will remain constant right and what is this di by dt this is the time rate of change of current and i is the current which is flowing through the coil at any time t Okay, so from this we understand that EMF is directly proportional to di by dt that is rate of change of current but you have a negative sign. So why do you have this negative sign? Because this EMF opposes the current which is flowing through the coil at any point in time. So basically this is in accordance to the Lenz law. So therefore your final expression here would be E is equal to minus L di by dt. So this is an important expression. So whenever you go talk about coil and self inductance, so you we will mostly make use of this relationship. Now let us look at the factors on which L depends. So L depends on the number of turns, cross-sectional area and the nature of material of the core. So as such L is constant but L can vary from one material to another. Okay. So as I said, this is the main expression when it comes to self-inductance. Now let us talk about the solenoid. Now let what is a solenoid? This is It is basically a conductor with uh, several turns of a wire. Now let's say this is a solenoid with n number of turns, capital N, right? And let's say that the length of the solenoid is L and how many turns it has? It has n number of turns. So in that case, the self-inductance of the solenoid is given by mu naught n square s upon L. So now you might be curious to know how did we derive this expression. So since this is a recap video, we are not getting into the derivations. However, if you are interested to know the derivation, please feel free to watch the video on electromagnetic induction of class 12th physics on examfear.com. Okay, so this is how we find out the self-inductance of a solenoid. Now an inductor also stores energy in its magnetic field. Like when we talk about a capacitor, a capacitor also stores energy in its electric field. Similarly, an inductor stores energy in its magnetic field. And the energy density stored in an inductor is given by half L I squared. And if you want to find out the energy density, so this was the energy that is stored. And if you want to find out energy density, which is energy per unit volume, this comes out to be half B square by mu naught. So I'm repeating once again, I am not getting into the derivations because that would consume more time. These are just the important formulae. So I'm just giving a quick recap of the formulae. Okay, so this was about self-induction. Now, there are many different possible combination of self-inductance. Just like we have combination of resistors, combination of capacitors. Now, the similarly, there are two types of combination. First is series combination where you have like, you know, inductors connected one after another. So one end of the first inductor is connected to the first end of the second inductor. So in this case, the equivalent inductance is equal to sum of the three inductances. 
Whereas if it is a parallel combination like this, where you have three inductors such that the end points like one first end point of all the three are joined together, the final end point of all the three again are joined together. So in this kind of a combination, the equivalent resistance is given by this expression 1 by L is equal to 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus 1 by L3. So this is how we find out equivalent inductance. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.